While it is uh, four hours and eight minutes into the 29th day, or the 28th day uh, of uh, March uh, 2021, and uh, we're back at the, my parents' basement once again. <laughs> another week is uh, another week has gone by. I'm wearing the uh, uh, the ear, po ear, ear pods that I got from. Uh, from China, they work pretty well. They only cost me twenty dollars, so <laughs> I'll take it out now. Very happy with them. I did a sound check. I always have to do a, the sound check to uh, make sure that, that everything's working all right. Uh, that we have sound uh, because there are some clips we filmed them and uh, there was no sound on them. So I, every time I put the microphone in, I. Uh, do a sound check, and uh, that's simply to make sure that there is an indeed sound. Uh, anyways, um, it's been one of those bizarre days. I'm making connections to things uh, that I really can't talk about. Uh, so there's a number of things that are within hidden information. With that, uh, as you work through your puzzle and you find uh, more pieces, uh, sometimes things. Uh, so you, you 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 create your collection initially without expectation of actually finding connections. It's not until sometime down the road that you'll actually need to make a connection. And I've done that. That sets you off in another path. And uh, it also gave me over the last couple of days the insight on how to sort of uh, approach things. That in many cases you really can't approach a very complex subject that's very deep, uh, very simply. And there's certain background information if a person is not willing to sit down and study and read, then there's no way, there's nothing to, to talk about because they're never unless they, unless they read through the sources they're never going to understand how a large chunk of What's going on today comes about. I mean, today's whole thing is that well, we can't talk about the virology because a large chunk of virology is oh, classified as biological warfare, and therefore a large chunk of the mechanisms which are up in uh, um, uh, quantum mechanics and uh, organic chemistry really can't be discussed. But there's nothing stopping a person from studying the studying the thing, going going into organic chemistry, going into quantum physics, and th then going into virology and sort of taking you know taking your your, your research in that direction. Uh, once you get into graduate school, in other words, you have to do four years of of of, uh, of uh, quantum physics. You have to do uh, four, uh, you know the same time at the same time you'll do a double major between of quantum physics and organic chemistry. You start off with a textbook. You understand there's more outside the textbook, but that becomes your base. After that, you take it into a research point. You know, now, now, if you want to take the wheels off and sort of go into sort of the more advanced stuff, this is where you start start doing that in graduate school because you've now you're, you're going to learn how to do analysis. Basically, uh, your back if you're finished with your bachelor's degree and think you know everything, guess again, you've only done the introduction. You've, you've only gone past the introduction. Uh, and you really don't have much knowledge. Your depth is very shallow in terms of your actual what you know. And you can spend the next four years, basically your graduate school, learning how to do analysis. Learning how to do critical analysis. And it's a very difficult thing because you want to know not only who, who says what, but how do they know what they know? You want to sort of question the person in terms of you're not attacking the person. You're sort of trying to figure out, well, how did this person get to know what they know? What were their influences? Who, you know, who did they read? Who did they study? How did they study? What were their influences? This gives you a sense of who, of, of who the scientist is and how they think about things. But that, that's, again, that's another four, a minimum of four years on top of the four years you did the introduction to quantum mechanics and organic chemistry. And, and if you want to, you add it in some virology. Uh, it's only in, once you start doing the analysis you begin to understand what's happening in, the, in, in, in a large chunk of the world. So you, you have at least eight years of studying ahead of you. In terms of the sense of politics that goes on, 
and this gets into the psychological operations of of, of different uh, government agencies, you're going to have to go into Edward Bernays. Because there is no other way to get into it to, through, except through Edward Bernays because everybody else is locked out of it. And this is what happens. A large chunk of what's taught in called standard education is simply a superficial treatment of what the rea actual reality is. And this was the creation, actually the reason why you study Edward Bernays is because he's the one who created it. He created a sort of a split world between what the public sees and what, what the government sees or what, what private eyes see in terms of uh, the private information, hidden information, and what they call forbidden information. Uh, and the security apparatus, typically what we call the CIA, are the people who secure and make sure that the ideas are are kept secure. They're kept away from the public, and their job is, in many cases, to create these sort of well, they they create the conspiracy theories. They give them some information, not enough, and they lead them down a particular path in terms of oh, this is what's happening here, or this is what's happening there. And in other words, they're, they're creating the conspiracy theory. But the thing is, they also create the other side. They create the both sides, and they create the conflict. They, they create the Hege what we call the Hegelian dialectic, uh, the conflict on both sides, and so that because they understand from from the people who guide them, because the, the CIA is guided from by other people, by other interests, uh, they have a belief that uh, through conflict of uh, synthesis and antisynthesis, that uh, uh, thesis and antithesis, that you produce synthesis. You synthesize. Uh, it's late, and so you synthesize uh, thoughts and ideas. You create progress through conflict, and only once the the the, the old is burnt to the ground, you build uh, your new progress, your brilliant, your, your your progressive world on the ashes of the old. And this is exactly what we're seeing in the streets. This is exactly what's going on. Because if you actually looked into into the science of what's happening, uh, you know, you get a, did your quantum mechanics, you did your uh, um, organic chemistry, and then you did your research into virology, you would understand what's going on as a psychological operation. Again, that's particularly the the area of Edward Bernays, and that's uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, engineering consent creating cons consent, uh, they create the cause that we find acceptable in society. Oh, those are bad guys over there. We're going to correct that problem. We're going to invade them. We're going to do regime change to get the bad guys out. We're going to be freedom fighters. Well, that's not really the case. It's, again, this is these are political words coming out. And you can sort of see how these things, uh, the behind the scenes plays out. With uh, two BBC productions, is Yes Minister, and then the sequel to it is Yes Prime Minister, and these were produced uh, by the BBC in the 1980s, and it really gives you a good insight into uh, what are the minds of the politicians, what are the minds of the government, how how do they function and operate in the manner that they do? Why is the thing, why are things the way they are now in terms of a political sense? Well, that you've got that there. Uh, in terms of the overall understanding. Because things, are, in many cases, surprisingly enough, are based on books, things that people read. And one of the main authors that should be read is, is we wrote this, uh, these particular things, uh, the particular view on society, particularly, called the social left. Uh, he wrote this in the 1800s. And his name is Dostoevsky. And he writes a book, several books, uh, the key ones that you should be reading are, first you read uh, The Brothers Karamazov. Uh, after The Brothers Karamazov, he's written two other books called The Idiot and the Possessed. Uh, these are his views and perspective on the uh, on the social left. These are, the, these are the, what we now call the socialists. Uh, and uh, at the end of it, he has one called Crime and Punishment. Uh, that's your ending uh, book that you need to read. Uh, the size of these books are not small, they're not light reads, and it could probably, possibly take you at least two years to get through it in order to really understand what's going on. In other words, you're not going to do a perusal and go, ah, I've read it and, you know, toss it off. These are things you want to sort of think about, you want to mold the, mold, uh, mold the ideas over your mind, 
when I do some, uh, some, sort of, some, some, uh, you know, philosophical work on th thinking about, well, what you read and how it impacts the world today. And from there you can go into, uh, particularly with the idiot and the possessed, um, or more like go the possessed, you can go into, uh, basically, uh, <laughs> Ironically enough, you can go into the gospel and look for Christ uh, 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 expelling the demons from uh, a possessed man and allowing the demons to go into a herd of pigs, a, per a herd of swine. Uh, and when the demons get into the herd of swine, they, uh, they quickly uh, uh, run towards a cliff and uh, run over the cliff. They don't stop into their own self-destruction. Well, this is what you see in uh, Crime and Punishment, how the intellectual sees his ultimate act, the, the, the final act uh, of his life, is to commit suicide. That this is the ultimate position of control, is to take your own life. And that you are now the master of your own domain by committing suicide. Uh, and we see this, ironically enough, with, with the pigs. And it's not the the reference of the pig should not be lost in history because there's a book by written by George Orwell called Animal Farm, and the pigs within the book are the communists. And so what happens? The communist pig reference uh, goes all the way back to the Bible. It's biblical actually, but there are a number of people. Uh, there are very few people understand the connection between the these things. The these uh, uh, books and the, the historical references because uh, the studies haven't been done. They, they, they simply haven't sat down to study. Most people, most of the people, and even whether they consider themselves to be a conspiracy theorist or not, they're weekend warriors. They do maybe some perusal on the weekend. They, they really don't do much in terms of going beyond the service. They'll go to articles that are written by other people and stuff like that, but they will not go, won't do the analysis. They won't do uh, they won't analyze the information that comes into them in terms of, well, how does the person know uh, what they're talking about? Where, where, do they, where does this guy get this information from? They don't try to source it. And, well, it's because, and again, it's a very long process. It takes months and years to do that. Uh, and then when it's deep dies, and, and in many cases, you get very little sleep. And people ask, well, you're, you're, all, you're always so tired. Well, what happens? Why, why don't you sleep? And well, Because... I've got the ideas rolling around in my mind, and sometimes when I connect things, I have to go out and do the deeper dive. But uh, because the 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 thoughts and ideas that nag at me, they become obsessive, and uh, I have to sort of come to some degree of resolution. And that's kind of the state that I'm in now: is that I am in the middle of of another deep dive. There are things, there are connections that I've made, and they're they're interesting connections, and it's how events and information from the hidden past, from, from the hidden information, moves history forward. And these are not necessarily well-known cogs. They're things that are typically behind the scenes and more often the unseen. And it, it, it really does, it is, there is that big gap, a large chunk, of, and so the, the conversation kind of falls off. You, you can only have the conversation to a certain degree. So you're kind of backed out of the conversation because you can't bring in information that would shift things uh, because there are things you just simply can't say. And, and, and this is the nature of the hidden and forbidden information, the hidden and forbidden knowledge. Anyways, uh, I've got a couple hours left before I end up going to church. We'll see how I end up feeling for the rest of the day. And, uh, well, uh, I think this is it. All right. We'll see you later. Well, it is nine hours and 35 minutes into the 29th day of uh, March, uh, 2021. I wish happy birthday to my mom. <laughs> uh, everybody's getting older. Everybody has a birthday and 
after a while, birthdays, uh, well, they come and they go, and because, uh, well, it really does mean you're getting a year older, and, and the rest of the saying follows. <laughs> I don't think it needs to be, uh, stated, because it is quite, it, it is a bit morbid. Uh, a large chunk of our perspective has to do with, uh, well, it is our perspective, it's, uh, we don't know what's beyond. <laughs> we know there's more beyond, but we don't know exactly what it is. And, of course, a transition into the unknown is the things we fear the most. And uh, <clears throat> Some of us are more adventurous than others, but at the same time... I'm gonna, uh, cleaning up some of the dishes here. Uh, I'm going to make myself some breakfast. breakfast. Um... At the same time, uh, you, at some point in time, become resigned to the condition that you're, that you're in. And you take the ride as it is. But I think in many cases, uh, and I think this is what doesn't happen, it, it typically, the resignation to life typically doesn't ha occur before 70 it's typically afterwards, and it's where people have become uh, incapacitated and uh, uh, can no longer do the things they used to do. Uh, so this is where sort of the, the, the resignation comes in, and they say, well, okay, this is what it is, this is what it's going to be, and, well, uh, not much you can do about it, <laughs> type of situation, and of course... You know, this is where the birthdays, so they're nice, but at the same time, they come and they go. And <clears throat> we had a nice uh, day yesterday. With, we had the family over and uh, uh, had a nice dinner, a nice Syrian di dinner. Uh, that's usually what you do is on Sundays, you have a se nice Syrian dinner. Um, and that's what we did. <laughs> the conversation isn't always here, and sometimes it's, it is a little bit labored. And this is where the point is we came to a lull, and we're talking about perspectives, and particularly the perspective of the beyond, and uh, it does frighten a lot of people, and that's why uh, we, in so many cases, at a certain point, you try to avoid it uh, in terms of necessarily consciously thinking about it, because it, it just kind of freaks you out. It's kind of it's kind of like uh, the 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 rope client the 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 sort of the contortionist uh, not the contortionist but the uh, the high wire walker or a cliff climber. Once you're at a certain height up, the advice is don't look down. Why? Or even in many cases, don't look up. Because what happens is, in order to continue on, you need to be focused on, to, on, on the immediate. There are certain times when you do have to be focused on the immediate. And doing such things, you know, uh, cliff climbing, that require a, a, a certain degree of risk. What happens is, when you look up and look down, you begin to see the reality of where you are, and this is where fear comes in. And fear can really cripple you. Uh, women, and even men, don't want to walk without a walker or walk without a cane. Why? Because they're afraid of folic. Women who have walkers uh, typically know at that particular point in time that they've broken a hip. They've, they can easily fracture a bone. <coughs> And this has to do with uh, how the body ages. This has to do with the chemistry and, and the physiology. That makes the bones weaker. Make, well, not weaker, but more more brittle. They become brittle. That's the uh, the more the, that's the better term. They become brittle, and they can break easily. And so they're they're afraid to you know you know they, they they don't like being in the hospital. They don't you know I don't think. Anyone enjoys being in the hospital. There is always this sense of, you know, you do have people, you know, call using the phrase, uh, 
grinning and bearing it, but the thing is the reality is no one really wants to be there. If they could have a choice and not be there and not deal with the pain or whatever, then they would. But the reality is, is that in this case, they're, they're, they're at a point where they're at other people's mercy. And uh, <laughs> once again, you have to be resigned to the situation. But once you're out of the situation, you don't want to go back. And so this is where a lot of fear comes in. The problem is is the fear could cause more accidents. It could put you back in the hospital again because uh, it, could, it literally knocks the legs from you. You become weak-kneed. <laughs> and it's not because there is a physical issue there. It's a psychological issue. It's, it's well, the talk about psychology. It's, it's an issue of the soul. And that issue is fear. And so this this is the same thing approaching the beyond and stuff like that is that we know what's there we know what's coming, uh, and as you get you know get to your sixties and older you start begin become aware. And matter of fact, this is what the issue is around what we call the midlife crisis. Is you get you're fifty years old, you're middle age, and all of a sudden uh, you begin to realize you look in the mirror one day, hey, I'm not as young as I used to be. Now that either freaks you out and sends you into, you know, a frenzy of activity to, to, <laughs> pardon the phrase, euthanize you, and this is making you, making you younger, or, you know, chasing your your, chasing your long gone or phantom youth. That's a better way to phrase this, or, or to present it. Um. And that's what that, that's what that is. It's just you know, just it's our own sense of self, it's our own sense of existence, and this is how we approach. It. And this is one of my transitions. Speaking of which, this is one of my transition points. Typically, I'd be coming out of bed. I was planning to do this in bed, but uh, well, typically when you wake up, you get to a point where you're getting up. Uh, that's when uh, well, the nature call hits and. Uh, well, there's not enough time to film. <laughs> so, uh, you use this as one of the transition points, but tip, because typically I'm going to go back to the media room research, uh, research desk and I'm going to watch some vlogs. Uh, I, I haven't done any, I haven't watched any vlogs all weekend. I watched cartoons, that weekend, weekends are typically cartoons. Uh, but I didn't watch any vlogs, so I'll catch up on those and, uh, uh, look at what I have on my desk in order to get done. Uh, I am starting to move back into a deep dive again, so that's going to change things a bit. Uh, but I, but because I have a, a, a an enlarged research desk, my, the, the capacity has significantly increased. Uh, it's not too big of a deal in terms of the overall uh, capacity. It's now a matter of structure and organization. So, uh, new phases, new things, uh, new challenges, and. Uh, we'll see you in a bit, well, whenever I get back here again.